every Epicurious video, they always call Rosemary Trout this perfect name for food consultant. Rosemary is seasoning, trout is fish. Today we're gonna to be seeing how good of a job Auntie Esther does with making ramen with Uncle Roger. And I think this will be a good video. If you do happen to enjoy this review today, guys, and be sure to give this a share, a like, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button because every bit counts. Now, let's get started. Hi, I'm Esther, I'm a professional chef, and these are my $116 ramen ingredients. Hmm. Why when Auntie Esther filming my video, she's so dirty. But when she filmed with Epicurious, she's so professional. Look, she even dressed like Vicar. What's going on? Hi, I'm Daniel. I'm a home cook, and these are my $11 ramen ingredients. $116 on ramen ingredients. Well, I hope this is going to be a good ramen because I don't think that I'd be paying that much to make ramen at home. Let me know what you guys think down below. But since we've seen so many of these Epicurious videos, I think they're actually going to be trading the ingredients. Let's see. Mmm! The exchanging ingredient. Oh. <laughs> ah! Who this guy? Why he look like Muppet from Sesame Street? Hi, yeah. He did Bird come to life and become real boy? Very familiar with this. I got it. Ah, Maru Chan Ramen. This classic instant ramen in America. But niece and nephew, up your instant ramen game. Like Uncle Roger, I only eat into me or Shin Ramen. Seeing that brand reminds me of growing up in the US because it is something that you do see quite a bit. And we recently reviewed a video in which someone was actually taking instant ramen noodles, dried noodles, and then putting PB&J on them and eating them. And if you want to see that video, I can leave the link down below for you guys to check it out, but that's just bizarre. Tonkotsu shoyu ramen is a creamy pork bone ramen. I had a really nice piece of pork belly that I was gonna roll along with soy sauce. Everything on it's in a different language. <laughs> Of course, it's a different language. That food from Japan, when Uncle Roger buy pasta, I don't want to see Chinese word on it. The one thing that I love about cooking though is that you always learn. Now that doesn't mean like every single pasta brand from Italy is actually the best quality pasta that you can get. There are differences between say more industrial pasta and more artisan. Now Daniel's the one that made the chorizo paella in our very first Epicurious review video. And uh, well, you should see that video if you haven't seen it. I've used this before to make like sushi rice, I think. Dried kombu? This feels like cardboard. This is hard. At least kombu just feel like cardboard. Jamie Oliver food tastes like cardboard. Big difference. Emotional damage! I think at this point, it actually has caused emotional damage. With Daniel's recipe, I have simpler ingredients. We have instant ramen noodles, eggs, garlic, ginger, scallions, soy sauce, and sesame seeds, mm. and a rotisserie chicken. This is like a nice gift. But this rotisserie chicken look like the saddest thing which Walmart you get it from? Five major components that make a really great ramen. It's the tare, which is the seasoning flavor, the broth, the noodles, the toppings, and the aromatic oil. Mmm, Auntie Esther know her ramen. Fuyo, see? She know everything about food. She the perfect woman. Well, let's see how this turns out, but I do think this will turn out good, and I believe that Esther even has a YouTube channel. So if you guys do want to see more of her recipes, then be sure to head over to her channel and say hi. I, I don't know how to make noodles. I'm scared about these noodles. Rose! Daniel, how Good are you? It. Never made handmade noodles before. Is there any sort of tip? Side note, every Epicurious video, they always call Rosemary Trout this perfect name for food consultant. Rosemary is seasoning, trout is fish, Uncle Roger gonna come up with Asian version of that. Uncle Roger gonna call my kids soy sauce tilapia. Make sure they grow up into food consultant. I mentioned this in a previous video and you do have to admit that she has a very unique first and last name. Again, no Rosemary said I don't want to fully cook it in here. But he said for a moment that Rosemary doesn't want to go in here. I'm thinking of herbs, I'm not thinking of names. I can only imagine if she was a chef, what the hazing would be like in the kitchen because, you know, it happens in the kitchen. People make fun of you for every little thing there is. I used to have quite a few nicknames in the kitchen as well. Maybe one day I'll tell you. Time to get started on the ramen noodles. I've got potassium carbonate and salt that I'm just gonna throw into the water. Now I'm 
just gonna add this to the flour slowly. Well, nothing's exploded yet, so that's that's a good sign. Looks what, like... what can explode? I know this Japanese wee joke, but you're making ramen, not attacking Pearl Harbor. How can explode? Even though that was quite a few years ago, that can still be a sore subject. Yes, this is... I hope long enough. I'm gonna trim the ends off so it's nice and square. And I'm just gonna cut it in half so it's a little bit more manageable for me. Hiya, no, don't cut in half. If you cut in half, see, your noodle gonna be too short. The slurping, not satisfying. There we go. Oh, snap, there's so many. Okay, uh, whoop. Whoa, look at that. See, it's too short. You put in mouth, you won't even notice it there. And that's what my ex-wife said to me all the time also. Now that is speaking from experience. All jokes aside, he is right. The noodles are way too short. We're gonna focus more on Auntie Esther. This home cook nephew don't know what he's doing. <laughs> so Daniel just sent me this rotisserie chicken and there's actually a lot that- Let's see what Auntie Esther can do with this depressing rotisserie chicken. So the first thing we're gonna do, pull off all the meat Good. from the chicken and separate the skin. Ah. Ah. Nice idea. I think she's gonna use the bone to make her broth. Bone is classic way to make ramen broth. And then the chicken meat can be good topping. And maybe chicken skin can turn into aroma oil. Very smart Auntie Esther. I see what you're doing. Keep watching, see if Uncle Roger correct. I think she's going to use the chicken skin and get it crispy as well to add a little bit of texture to this. We have our chicken meat, our skin, and then the bones. Mm, the good, good. So this is the carcass. You can see here I'm kind of separating and dismantling the carcass. Correct, if you break bone, more flavor will come out. To extract more flavor from the bones. This is ready. I'm just gonna add water to our stock. Uncle Roger loves seeing the dead chicken in that pot. Fuyo, vegetarian niece and nephew, you missing out. See, with chicken, you can make delicious broth like this, just kill one, don't be pussy, just kill one chicken. Even if you don't eat chicken, you can still make a very good vegetable stock. And I actually have a very good vegetable paella plus a veggie stock that I made in that video. And it's a good one if you're interested to uh, see a video like that. If you're going to be using a rotisserie chicken to make stock after it's already cooked in either the oven or over a wood burning fire or a grill or nothing like this, rotisserie, it's going to change the flavor greatly of that stock. It's not going to have the same flavor as it would have if it was just raw chicken that you add to the pan and cook it. For aromatics for the broth, we want to build as much flavor as possible. Mm. So to the chicken, we're just going to... Wait, aromatic already? That a bit early. Uh, add some of the scallion. Usually we only put aromatic in there after the broth boil for a few hours. But maybe Epicurus give them time limit, so Uncle Roger understand. Many Western cooking shows, they book studio kitchen like this, but then they only book a few hours. I don't know why, maybe they know budget. Ginger, we're just gonna give it a quick chop as well. And I like to leave the skin Ginger good. Because it's stuck. Studio kitchens rent out by the hour and I'm sure also you can rent them by the day and everything else, but they can be quite expensive. Now as for the stock, you don't need to cook this stock for like three, four or five hours because the chicken is already cooked. You don't need to boil the you know what out of it. However, if you are in a rush at home and you need to make say some quick chicken stock, you can make a chicken stock in an hour. It's not going to be the same if you cook it say three hours or a little longer to the point where the chicken actually just disintegrates on you because then you get you know all the gelatin and everything from the connected tissue out of it but it's still good it still has flavor and i do have a few stock recipe videos on my channel too same with garlic i'm just gonna give it up nice pound mm. Auntie Esther the pounding uncle roger same. favorite thing to watch the skin on throw it now now don't give him any ideas in the pot with the chicken and let this go for two hours on a rolling boil. Only Isn't two hours. All right. Maybe a bit longer. But like I said, epicurious, no budget. Tare is a seasoning liquid that goes into ramen. And that's basically what gives the salt to your ramen. And to really give this tare a great umami, we're gonna be using the chicken. <gasps> yes! Fuyo! See? Auntie Esther also loves MSG just like Uncle Roger. That flavor packet in every pack of instant ramen, that the MSG makes shit good. That's why Auntie Esther, queen of flavor. In the instant ramen noodles. Now this is like gold. I love this stuff. 
Uncle Roger loved it too. Oh uh, yeah, that we already know. It's been years since I've tried instant ramen. Years. To that, we're gonna add ginger, ginger and garlic. garlic. This will go five minutes. Make sure the seasoning packet is well incorporated. Extract some of that flavor from the garlic and ginger. Good, good. There we have it, our beautiful tare. We're gonna be using the scallions, the ginger, and the garlic to make an aromatic oil. So we're adding the oil, and then we're just gonna turn mm. this on. Medium high heat. Okay. Let that go as we mince our ginger and garlic. More pounding. Basically what I'm slice. Now just to double check, let's see what type of oil she's using. It doesn't look like olive oil. This is good. Here is our beautiful aromatic oil. And then this is our crispy topping that's gonna give so much texture to this ramen. So I am nice. About Very smart idea. Yeah. So Daniel sent me these eggs, and instead of just cracking the egg in the broth, we're gonna be making onsen tamago. Ooh, onsen tamago. That is egg in hot spring bath. Mm. Very nice texture, silky smooth egg. It's like the better version of egg benedict. Oh. Always choose onsen tamago. Egg benedict for uncultured people. Oh, Roger, you hurt my feelings and I'm sure a lot of others. I love eggs, Benny. When you make a good hollandaise sauce, you have a perfectly poached egg, Canadian bacon, and a nice toasted English muffin. It's delicious. Nobody just order egg benedict for the egg. People only order egg benedict for the hollandaise sauce. If you need sauce to make your egg good, you fucked up. But onsen tamago, you can have it just by itself. It's so delicious. One day when I was cooking in France, I had to make a lot of escargot snails. We had a banquet going on and I had to make a garlic butter sauce to go with it. I'm not a big fan of escargot and my chef forced me to try it. Yeah. So I took a little escargot, I put a little bit of the parsley garlic butter sauce on it and I tasted it. And to be honest, it didn't taste bad. And my chef said this, my French chef, he said to me, he said, James, le sauce mixe the dish. And the sauce can literally either make or break the dish. At least in French cuisine, the French take sauces very seriously, and so do I. The reason why we're doing four cups of boiling to one cup of cold is because we want that sweet spot of the temperature of 167. Mm -hmm. Then we're just gonna cover it and let this sit for 15 minutes. And let's test one out. It's always let's see. frustrating. If it does, it's very exciting. Now, if you actually have professional equipment, you can use a sous vide machine, you know, the actual machine with the water bath and everything, or even if you had an oven such as, say, a Rationale oven, hint, hint, I would like a, a sponsorship Rationale, which means that you can make a lot more of them at the same time. Okay, good, there's one. Just don't cut to my pet nephew. I want to see <laughs> Auntie Esther egg. Oh, perfect. Mm. You see how the yolk is so semi-set. Then this... This woman nailing everything, except Uncle Roger. Cheeky. Let's see what my pet nephew getting up to. <laughs> Been a couple hours. Ba -ba! Look at that. How nice mm. does that look? It smells so good. Whatever I was smelling before, this is completely ramped up. There's like way more sweet, way more savory. Oh, and it just looks so dark and rich and thick. Dark and rich and thick, that Uncle Roger's favorite type of woman. So if you dark, rich and thick, slide into Uncle Roger DM. <laughs> <laughs> He's on a roll, eh? Cutting my braised pork belly. It's like disrespectful how good that looks. You have to admit that Daniel has done a better job than the chashu that we saw with uh, Jamie's video. Look at that. Just falling off the bone. He actually got a little bit of color on it. But he's cutting these a little bit thick. If this is how you like it, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just that, you know, unless you have a fork and a knife, it makes eating this a little difficult. It's missing a little glaze on the outside, you know? You gotta hit it with the torch. Oh no. <laughs> Don't give this guy torch. Someone with this much eyebrow should not use flamethrower. You're gonna burn them off, hiya. I'm gonna flip these over and do the same thing. The chashu too thick, who want to bite into this like that. Slice thinner, slice thinner. Ah, I'm not the only one that thinks he cut it too thick. Yeah. Broth has been going for about two hours. You can see the carcass is broken down. It's starting to thicken. So we're gonna strain it through a chinois. You nice. Can use a ladle to kind of push out all 
of that flavor. Squeeze it all out, like how my ex-wife squeezed out all my money. If any of you are into cooking a lot at home and you make your own stocks, it does pay to have a chinois like this. This specific type with the big band on the bottom, I don't like because what can happen is, and we've seen this in another video, is that once the stock hits the bottom, it can go sideways. The type that I have where it's just a wire mesh on the bottom is a very good type, and these are industrial made. They hold up really well. So we're gonna fry the chicken skin. Good. If you go to a Japanese restaurant, you can even just order the skin separately. And that's Correct. the inspiration. Skin, the best part. So many health conscious people, they don't eat chicken skin because they scare cholesterol. Hi, uh, what the point of living if you don't eat chicken skin? You call it cholesterol. Uncle Roger called it enjoying life. It's like with the egg white omelets. Just imagine that if you're on the line and you're making one omelet after another and in pans that are not non-stick pans, by the way, when you have to stop what you're doing, the production line, and just make that omelet, and you have to be careful with egg whites. Yes, they cook a little differently. It really throws a wrench into service. Thinking about it, I did have once an egg yolk only omelet. That was different, very different. You hear a little sizzle, I think that's ready. I love this idea. Mm. I now wanna do this at my restaurant. See that oil coming out? You can put that in aroma mm. oil, Auntie Esther. Hope she remember. You know it's done when it kind of holds together like that. Remember that seasoning packet? I'm just gonna mm. sprinkle it. Mmm. Chicken skin. She double MSG her ramen. Fuyo. This woman go above and beyond two MSG packet for one dish. That why Uncle Roger in love with her. You see, this is the part I honestly don't think he's joking. I really think this is the truth. As soon as it cools, it's like ultra, ultra crispy. And I can't resist. I'm sorry, but I gotta taste it. Mm. Nice crunch. But I think she really forget to use the oil from chicken skin. Mm. One small mistake, Auntie Esther. Nobody perfect. So Daniel sent me sesame seeds and... Sesame seed? Good topping. Plain sesame seeds doesn't have that much flavor, but once you toast it, it changes completely. Correct. Sesame has a lot of oil. In Always toast your sesame seed. Don't eat raw sesame seed. You're not baby, but... I have a scallion, which we're just gonna slice. This is also true with many other spices, especially like black pepper when you use it. If you toast the black pepper before, you get more flavor out of them. So try this next time when you're cooking. When doing this, just keep in mind that you wanna use a dry pan, no oil. The restaurant, we call this sexy, sexy scallions. scallions. See, then Uncle Roger, no. The sesame seeds that we toasted, we're just gonna grind it up into a powder. Our last two toppings are ready to go. Just cook our noodles and we're ready to assemble our ramen. Starting with our chicken, some of our crispy mixture. Nice. The crispy chicken skin. Next, I'm gonna do the egg. egg. Of course, we have our scallions. Last, Last but not, not least, least, aromatic oil. oil. Ah, a small mistake there, Auntie Esther. Plating order for ramen. You start with tare and aroma oil, and then you pour the broth mm. in. Let the broth mix with the oil and the tare. You're not supposed to use aroma oil, like little drizzle over the ramen. Yeah, you tell her. To be honest though, she did do a good job and it does actually look like Uncle Roger has learned a lot since the very first reaction video that he made. Straight! What's she doing? Drain the Oh my god! And this is my take on Daniel's ramen recipe. That looked pretty good for yeah. you! This woman's such amazing mm. chef. She can make two minute ramen in two hours. <laughs> what Auntie Esther when she's filming with me? She's so dirty. But when she filmed with Epicurious, she looks so innocent. Hmm. And why she dressed like Vicar? <laughs> Every once in a while, it is nice to see Uncle Roger review a really good video. I think both of them did good. We didn't really see much of what Daniel finished, but Esther did a very good job, especially with the simple ingredients that she had. She did a really good job. So guys, be sure to support Auntie Esther and be sure to check out this next video coming up here. And I will see you guys again very soon. Until then, take care. And if you have any questions or comments, then let me know down below or any suggestions on what to review or to make Next.